Welcome to Ask GMBN. Um, I hope you're having a great week and thankfully you've sent in some great questions which gives us an excuse to talk about all things mountain biking. So let's get straight into your questions for this week. Uh, first one is from Nick Beeson who says, uh, I love the shed and all the information you put together. Um, he's asking, clearly for the money, direct sales companies like Canyon Spectrals or YT Jeffsies, they're a really great option because you're saving a lot of money. But he has heard that local bike dealers don't like helping you out once you've got that bike. Now, I guess there is an argument, okay, that uh, a local bike dealer could be a little bit disappointed you haven't come to them to get the bike, but if that's their view and they're not treating you in a great way because you didn't buy the bike from them, then I would say they're not a committed local bike store because you are a valued customer, you've got a bike and they should be looking after you no matter where you've got the bike. Just my opinion, but you know, if, if that is happening then it's a shame and it shouldn't be. Um, next question. Mr. Cycle Guy says, why do most downhill riders use clipless pedals when they don't really pedal that much? I'm not sure if that's true. Um, he says that if they were on flat pedals, they could save, they could be safe from crashes and wouldn't get so many injuries. Well, a lot of riders uh, choose their pedal system just out of preference. I do know top World Cup downhill riders who ride flat pedals, uh, but many of them these days do have their feet clipped in because you've got so much more power when you're pedaling and a lot of the time some of these races come down to big sprint moments near the finish or getting out of that start gate. There are iconic moments like when Aaron Gwynn wins a World Cup with no chain, you know, no pedaling at all. But it's very, very rare and it's usually course specific. So clip pedals more and more are becoming part of downhill racing. Uh, it's just the way to go quick. David Carvalho says, um, do you recommend buying a cheap bike, uh, say $300, 300 euro bike, uh, and then upgrade it to try and improve it over time? Good option. Um, any bike's great uh, and you've got to work within your budget. So if that's your budget, then you've got to go with it. Um, I would say spend as much as you can early on because you want to get a really solid, decent bike, good platform to get riding with, uh, and then you can upgrade. but. There's only so many upgrades you can do to a cheap bike because after a while the upgrade, upgrades like suspension or dropper posts, um, gear uh, derailleur sets, uh, they're going to cost more than the frame that you're riding. So sometimes it's not really worth going too far. But spend as much as you can at that starting point because you want to get the best bike possible that's going to really give you a good amount of mountain biking right from the start. Uh, Maxime View says, Got myself a Canyon uh, AL 6.9, lucky you. Um, after my first ride, something uh, something's happening, the gears are ticking. Is it normal for the bike to need adjustment on the gears when you first got it? Um, yeah, that is kind of common actually. Your bikes are gonna need your bikes are gonna need to adjust, your brakes are gonna need to adjust, your gearing's gonna need to adjust. So it's not unusual to have to tweak your gears. Um, and it just so happens we made a video recently about how to adjust and set those gears up. So take a look. Getting your gears shifting quickly and smoothly should be quite an easy job to do, but it takes a little bit of knowledge about how that system works first. A clean well lube chain will make a big difference to how easy that chain shifts up and down that block. So do that first. Both front and rear mech work on the system of having the correct cable tension so both your upshifts and downshifts are quick. So let's break that down to three parts. First your cables, then we'll look at the limit adjusters, then we'll actually look at the cable tension. Wow, doesn't Neil look young in that video? Oh my goodness, he's aged. We've aged him, Mike. Terrible, terrible. Um, okay, next question is from WTCB2003. Um, how do you measure spoke length uh, when you need to build a new wheel? Oh, that's a tricky one actually. Um, but you know what? There are really great online systems you can use where you've only got to put in what hub you've got and what rim you're using, uh, product details, and it will tell you the spoke lift length that you need, usually pretty accurately. Um, so they're quite dependable. Um, it's a bit of a dying art wheel building. Um, back in the day, lots of people used to build up their own wheels, but these days it's very affordable to buy a complete wheel um, and it's a pretty economic way of doing it. So it's happening less and less, but if I, if you want to build from scratch, then I'll go and check out one of those online measurement systems. Um, if you just search spoke length measurement, 
you'll find it really easy. Uh, there's a few different brands who do that. So good luck with it. Um, and if you're building a wheel, show us a little time-lapse video. I'd love to see it happening. Um, okay, Andrew Julian says, how do you break, your, how do you make your brakes more sensitive? Well, that's a good question, actually. Um, there's lots of different ways to adjust brakes these days, and different brands have got different systems to do that. It's usually a really great way up on the bars to adjust your reach and how much brake you've actually got, so that can really help. Um, quick thing to try, uh, you get a normal cycle bottle of, uh, bottle of water, like the one he hasn't got to hand, like this bottle I just found. Um, just fill it with water, squirt it on the discs, and then go for a ride with the brakes slightly on, um, and that'll really freshen them up, take any little bits of grime off, and they'll suddenly feel really sharp straight away. Um, just cleans them off quick. I always used to do that just before I was going for a ride, um, to do some trials on the rocks where you want really sharp brakes. So a bit of water on the disc usually makes a big difference. Um, and if you want to work out some other ways to get your brakes working really well, check out this video, which is how to get your more power from your brakes, um, a classic, so take a look. Brakes are the most important controls on the bike, so making sure you get them set up before you ride the bike is essential. So this is our guide to tailoring your brake setup. Number one, let's look at the lever position actually on the handlebar first. If you've got a modern bike with disc brakes, you should definitely try and learn to ride with one finger on the brake if you're not doing it already. So I actually recommend setting your brake lever up so it's moved right in on the handlebar so you can't actually fit more than one finger on there. So a lot of people do use two fingers, but actually slide it in a little bit further. You just get much more grip on the handlebars if you've got these three fingers and your thumb wrapped around. So slide it in, there you go. My one finger rests right on the very end, so I'll just Tighten that up slightly for now. Great video that. Right, next question is from Multi W8. My bike is in the shed through winter and is starting to rust. Gutted, um, especially the chain. Uh, and it's getting more and more dirty. How can I maintain it best and prevent uh, more harm? Well, if the chain's really rusty, then I would suggest looking at a new chain because uh, the rust is different to just having a dirty chain. Um, it's gonna have damaged it, it's gonna have weakened it. Um, and it could snap, and I've had that happen to me, it's awful. Um, if it's just dirty, then clean it off. Um, we could use some WD-40, like, you know, the standard one there, spray it all over, it'll really help clean it off, and once you've done that, lube it up with some good chain lube, um, and that'll keep it running nice and smooth, and it'll protect it over the winter when you're not using the bike. Um, Wazzy Travel says, do you own your own dream bike, or are there anything you're, any bikes you're looking at? Oh, you know what, I've got my eye on an idea of a bike at the moment, um, but it is top secret. Um, Mike, can I tell him? No, 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 it was a no face. I can't tell you anything about the bike, but I have got a dream bike in my head and I'm hoping it's gonna happen. Um, I know that Blake's got his eye on a really nice bit of kit. I think he's getting later in the year, but we're pretty spoiled here at GMB and we've got some very nice bikes. So we've got maybe too many dream bikes. Um, we're lucky like that, it's good, isn't it? Uh, Matt Cardle says, will a gravel bike be all right for enduro style riding? Boy, you know what? Um, a gravel bike's gonna struggle on a, a real enduro course, you know, cause they're pretty much hardcore downhill courses these days. Um, the bits in between the downhill runs um, probably be fine, but yeah, I think it would really struggle on something that is severe as an actual enduro course. So I would avoid that. Keep to the uh, fire roads, the gentle tracks at your bike park. Um, you can have a bit of fun with it, but yeah, won't push it too far because you're gonna have breakages um, and you could have injuries. Okay, Gooseman123 says, I'm a road cyclist switching to MTB. Woohoo! We've won one. Got a little Dan Lloyd doing some mountain biking. Yeah. Oh, I see that, 180 switch drop, nice. Um, I bought a bike that has 720 mil bars. Um, I think they're okay, but my dad rode MTBs in the 90s. I know the kind of guy. Um, and he says I need to cut them down to shoulder width. Oh, should I leave them alone or get out the hacksaw? Well, you know what, a bar width is personal preference. Um, and, and your dad's right, in the 90s the bars were a bit narrower. Um, even if you look at some videos of people riding top, like World Cup downhill tracks in the noughties, they're still quite narrow. And you're right about, about shoulder width, but these days it's not uncommon to see someone with 800 mil bars really wide. I like wide bars. 
cutting them down though is up to you. You know, once you've done it, you can't go back. Um, but if you want to do it, I'm, I love this. Check out this retro GMBM video uh, with uh, one of our superstar presenters from back in the day, Mark Beaumont. Um, and this is how to cut your bars if you want to do it. Oh, I, don't, I don't think you should. So today we're going to have a look at bar width and how you might cut your bars down to suit the style of riding. Everybody's different and it is personal preference. Downhill guys will run as wide as 800 or sometimes even bigger, with cross country guys running 700, 720. Um, as I said, personal preference, where you ride will make a difference and the type of riding that you do. So these bars are 780 mil standard. We're gonna chop them down to 760. It'll make the bike feel a little bit more nimble. And as I'm a smaller guy, not too broad in the shoulders, I like to have slightly narrower. Quick fire round. We're going to smash through some questions as quick as we can. Um, there's some good ones this week. Uh, Tim Perkins, will any of you be making it over to Rotorua Crankworks? Um, I would love to go to New Zealand and ride at the Crankworks. Mike, can I go to New Zealand? Uh, next year. <laughs> it's quick fire, I think we should move on. Uh, Miles Voigt says, can I put 2.6 inch tyres on my plus bike um, that came with 2.8 tyres uh, without dropping the BB too late? Well, you can do it. You could put smaller tyres on, but you are going to get a drop and the BB is going to get closer. You might get away with it. You might not even notice, but that is just a fact. It is going to drop down. If you start getting lots of pedal strikes on tight turns, it's not going to be that much fun. But, you know, it's one of those things you probably can't tell until you try it. But, you know, you might have to just experiment. Tommy Saran4 says, when is Blake coming to Finland? Oh, I'd love to send Blake to Finland. Can we send Blake to Finland now? Oh, yes. Yes, he's on his way. <laughs> Will Ashton says, will there be a global BMX network? You never know. You never know if there's some BMXers out there who want to start a channel. There's all sorts of talented guys out there. Who knows? Who knows what's in the future? Uh, Michael Amsalok says, I'm waiting for the new dirt jumping videos from Blake's. Uh, well, I would love to get them to you, but we've just sent him to Finland. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Chris Gorg... Oh, I'm going to struggle with your name. George Yardis uh, says, how do you keep your hands warm on a ride? Um, I struggle with this. Um, I get really cold hands when I'm out riding. One thing you can try is if you get latex gloves, really thin like medical gloves, put them under your normal gloves, that keeps your hands nice and hot, it works really well. Some Yorkshiremen taught me that trick after a ride where my hands had frozen solid and theirs hadn't. Um, they could have told me at the start, but there we are. John Garham says, do you need to buy more GMBN stuff so you can afford heat in the shed? We, it, it, the temperature in this shed is quite strange. At the moment, it's actually boiling. Um, I can't tell how hot it is. Last week, it was freezing. I don't know how it works. I really don't. It's something to do with this thing. I don't know, it's high quality wood or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think at the moment we're warm, but we have had days where it's teeth chattering. Um, I, the, the question coming up next is from a name that's not even readable, um, so I'm not going to try. It's letters I've never even seen, um, but hi. Uh, how cold is it in your studio? You're dressed warmly. Another question about, oh, I said, I'm not now, look, t-shirt, it's fine. It's fine. Before Christmas, it was unbelievable. Hugo Quinn, how tall is Neil? Well, he's about, he's about that high. But that's from the table, <laughs> so like that. Now he's, uh, I keep messing about with his height. He's not actually that short. He's 5'3", so it's decent height, it's decent height. <laughs> and that is, correct me, uh, that is quickfire. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, I like this bit of the show because we get to look at some of your riding from videos you've sent in and you can send them into dirtshed at gmbn.com um, and we'll take a look and see if we can help you correct a piece of riding or progress uh, a skill you're trying to learn. Um, and this week's rider is Oscar. He's 16, he's in Australia. No, he's a very decent rider. He's trying to do a really difficult trick. It's a 180 with a tail whip, so a bit of a skate park move. Um, tail whips were never m m my thing. I landed them a couple of times, but it was never my, uh, my forte. But I'm gonna take a look, see if I can help you with it. Um, let's have a look. Um, oh, it's a nice little ramp coming in. Whack! So you're getting a 180 nice, and as you spin round, you know, I, I think I can see what you're doing. 
Um, and I'm going to freeze frame it just there because I think that's where it's most obvious. But you can see, if you look at that photo, that the bike's really to one side and your legs are literally next to the bike. Now, the bike needs to be below your legs. So what that requires is a bit more pump and it means you've got to really, really commit to the move. Uh, and that right foot has got to come round and catch the uh, pedal. Um, you've really got to be slamming that in towards the pedal arm and the crank and the bottom bracket itself to try and plant that foot. When you do, you'll be able to ride it out. So there's a bit to do there. It looks close, but it's commitment. Um, Blake would be telling you to slam that right foot round and grab the pedal. Uh, but when you've done it, you'll have landed an incredible trick. Um, you'll be doing a 180 tail whip. So that's pretty nice. Um, I'm a little bit jealous. Thanks for sending that in, Oscar. Remember, you can send your videos in um, to dirtshed.gmbn.com. And of course, you can put questions down below this video in the comment section for us next week or send us your questions um, to dirtshed.gmbn.com as well. I um, hope you've enjoyed the show. I definitely enjoyed going through your questions. Make sure you check out some of our recent videos. It's the start of the year, so we've got some New Year's resolutions just there. And we've got some inspiration from the pros over here. Click on the globe to subscribe and don't forget to give us some thumbs because we really enjoy seeing those.